With the Tournament of Champions starting today, I thought it would be a good time to discuss something that doesn't get talked about too much on the final wager, or in general, wagering to tie in a tournament. In a tournament, as you know, there has to be one winner every game. If two players are tied for the lead after Final Jeopardy, they enter a tiebreaker question, which is just a buzzer race on a single clue. First to respond correctly takes the prize. This happened in the team tournament finals last year, and that was a very straightforward situation, but things get a little tricky. So I want to talk about what situations you might want to withhold that extra dollar and not go for the outright win right away. Let's start with a straightforward example. This comes from a team tournament semifinal six years ago. We've got Karan and Sarah tied for the lead with 12,800 and Anurag nipping at their heels at 11.6. If you're tied with another player, you have two options, everything or nothing. There's no in between. So we're just Karan and Sarah. They both make their picks and hope it works out. Anurag makes things very easy for them. He could easily just wager 1201 and get it right and pass them were they to wager zero. So they're forced to wager everything. Unfortunately, Sarah didn't get the memo. She wagered 9500 and it was passed by Anurag, who for some reason wagered everything as well. So if everyone had wagered everything and all had missed, we'd have a triple zero semifinal game, which would end up happening a few years later. Here's a similar situation from the 1997 College Championship. Brian and Steven tied with 6,500, Joel in third with 2,800. But this time, Joel can only get to 5,600. So he can't cover a zero wager by either of these gentlemen. So that option is in play. And now we have to think about, well, what am I gonna do? We'll get back to that in a second. But let's look at another situation. This one a little bit more complex. This example comes from the Ultimate Tournament of Champions, featuring my fellow college champion, Vanita Kalasana. She's in second place here with 14.6, David in the lead with 20,000, and Steve in third with 5,400. Now, some of you might recognize this as a wager and tie situation, where first equals second plus third. Normally, that'd be a wager to tie scenario for the leader, but the problem is he doesn't have that luxury here. So. Does he go for the tie? Does he go for the win? Does he go for something else? First, why is it a wager to tie situation? If David covers Vanita, uh, she'll have 29.2, so he'll need to wager 9,200. And if he's wrong, he'll have 10,800, which is double Steve's score. So Steve's going to want to go for everything here. That's clear. David knows this. And now he looks and says, hey, what is Vanita going to do? Vanita is going to want to probably wager to stay above 10,800. Should be a wager of 37.99 at most. But you'll see that he she can't cover a zero wager by him, so he might be safe just sitting there with a zero wager. He's got plenty of options. But what if Vanita does go for everything? She goes for 14,600. David's probably going to want to try to lock her out by a dollar, right? Of course, if he does that, he risks falling to Steve on the downside. How does he make this decision? In the end here, David did go for the extra dollar, and Vanita wagered a dollar too much herself, but still managed to win by that lone buck. Had Steve gotten it right, he would have doubled up. We would have had a tiebreaker. Now that we've looked at some example situations, Let's talk about factors you want to take into consideration when deciding whether to add the dollar, withhold the dollar, or pick another range entirely. First and foremost, as always, what do I think my opponents are going to do? A lot of times their wagers are going to be forced, as with that first situation. How do I feel about the category? How do my opponents feel about the category? If I'm playing an English professor and the Final Jeopardy category is geology, maybe I assume that he's going to go on the low range. Don't forget that there's a correlation of about 20% between correct responses in Final Jeopardy. So if I get it right, if I think I'm going to get it right, there's a better than average chance that my opponent is also going to get it right. Same thing if I'm going to get it wrong. It doesn't always hold, but it does come in handy when deciding whether to add the dollar or to keep it off. Finally, if I do get into a tiebreaker, do I like my chances? Am I playing a fiend on the buzzer? 
do I think I can outwit him? Do I have a better chance at knowing a random clue selected from the Jeopardy universe and then winning the buzzer race? It's a lot to take into consideration. Thankfully, you have an unlimited amount of time when calculating the final wager. We'll see you soon.